Hey, good morning everybody. Today we're doing a little stamp concrete pad. What's a little different about this, this is kind of like for a, kind of like for a garden. We've got to wet set all these pipes in here so they can set set like the frame of a trellis in here. And this person, you know, they grow all kinds of plants. Here's the plants right here. You can see them all lined up, ready to go in there. So today we're going to get the concrete down, get it stamped, and then we'll get all these set in there for them so they can they can finish building this. Hey everybody, so this slab is going to be kind of unique to us and something we've never done before or been asked to do, but I think we can handle it all right. You're going to you're going to see what it looks like after we get done pouring this. What the what we have to do with those little white stakes over there and you're gonna be like what that's crazy these people are kind of like gardeners they like growing a lot of stuff so they needed something where their plants could grow up and just not like flat out on the ground so they kind of they kind of thought this up on their own or they'd seen it somewhere and they just wanted some stamp concrete under it so it would look really nice so that was kind of part of the deal what they did was they had the they had kind of like the grass and the sod and the loom grubbed off. They had some gravel brought in, you know, about a foot of gravel, compacted, leveled. And then we came in, we formed up the outside with two by fours, got it up off the ground a little bit because we were shooting for about a four inch average here. There isn't really going to be a lot of weight on this. So it didn't have to be any thicker than that. That's going to be plenty thick enough. And then, you know, we, we formed it all up, got the matter of fiberglass rebar tied in there. Let me know what you guys think about that fiberglass rebar too. We've been using a lot of it. We kind of like it. Just, uh, it's really lightweight, but it's strong. Just gotta, just gotta keep it held in place when you're pouring because it does tend to want to move a little bit. And then, uh, you know, pouring the, pouring the slab here like we're doing the access. We didn't want to back the truck off the driveway. <laughs> because we didn't want to break the driveway you know and so we had to use our chute even though it's a small slab like this it wasn't too bad with the 10 foot chute we just had to pull a little bit to get going but me darren and luke we're gonna we're gonna show you how we screed this from the outside and then as soon as we get done screeding and bow floating then we're gonna lay this thing out you're gonna see just how we laid it out to put these put these uh, white tubes I guess if you want to call them that now they're gonna I believe they're gonna have extensions on those too that are gonna go up even higher than what you see there but so what Luke and I are doing is we got a 12 foot screed and we're just screeding right on top of the form basic simple screeding here we like keeping the screed that's a magnesium screed on the back edge we don't like the front edge digging into the concrete and, and that's so it doesn't tear the concrete open, the aggregate in the concrete. When we do it on the back edge like that, and we keep that back edge pressed down to the form, it kind of smooths it out as we screed and just makes bull floating a lot easier. So just a little trick to the trade that we do. We don't, we also don't like pull it really, really long strokes. We just go short and then once we see that we've scored, we just keep moving forward and that just helps keep the the guy raking makes the guy's raking job a little bit easier i think you can see if you pour that at the right slump you can <laughs> you can grab that screed board basically with one hand and just screed it down like that got a little bit too much in there so we're just gonna Put it in the bushes, they said. <laughs> so we're also using a 4,000 PSI concrete with air entrainment in it, because we live in Maine. We're gonna get a lot of freezing and thawing from December to March. And, you know, that just, uh, the air entrainment just helps protect it against freezing and thawing a little bit better than if there was no air entrainment in it. That's as easy as it is to bull flow. Just basically, when you pour that right slump, just down and back. Mag your edges smooth. And then your next step is just to let it set up a little bit. But this one, you're gonna see just how we laid this out here in a second. All right, so that's the pour. Now what we gotta do is we're gonna set this plank across. We got, I think we got three lines. There's seven, seven, and seven of these 
we got a wet set down in there. We're gonna get them nice straight in the line so they can they can set their pipes to the trellis down inside them to support that. So we're gonna get right on that in a minute here. So we'll be back here in a minute. All right, so we got three rows of these things going the long way and then seven going this short way. So we laid everything out, pounded our stakes in there. You can see we just pulled some out and we're just gonna snap a line into the concrete itself. And then where we have all the intersections, then we'll know where to press this things, these things down into the concrete. Now we taped around the bottom so no concrete would go up inside them. And we're trying to get these pressed right down, right on top of the dirt or the gravel if we can. And we'll get them, you know, fairly close right now just to be in straight. But we're not too, too worried about them being perfectly plumb right now. We'll check that as the concrete sets up a little bit. We can... We can play with that a little bit. The key was just getting them all in place because there's a lot of them. So we're going to go around the outside edge and, you know, reach the ones from the outside that we can. And then we got to run that plank to get the ones on the inside before the concrete's all start setting up too much. So in addition to this, you know, we, we got to get our edges edged. We got to get the whole slab remagged again. And we got to prep it before we start stamping it. So there's quite a bit to do on a little slab like this with all these with all these uh, white stakes going in before we actually get ready to stamp. So this was our design to get out into the middle <laughs> a 2 by 12 on top of a bucket and then the chute on the other side. All it really needs to do is just kind of hold my weight a little bit while I reach out in the middle since we got all the other ones from the outside. So I got five of these basically to set. Looks like it's going to hold okay without breaking. And that's how I got all the middle ones set right there. So as you know, getting all these set was really half the battle. Getting this thing stamped is probably going to be the easier part of the job. Since it's kind of small, you can reach some of it from the outside and you can get all the way around it kind of a cloudy day the sun's not beating on it. it's not too hot out today so a lot of factors going into kind of making this an easy stamp job all right so we got them in there we got them in place and as the concrete sets up a little bit when we start stamping we'll we'll plumb them a little better to make them a little straighter and again, they got those plants over there. See all those plants lined up in those in those buckets with the pipes coming up through them. So they set those plants over them, and you know it helps it helps the plant grow straight straight up the tubing a little bit better. So we'll be back here in a few minutes.
Schuhe zum Ordnen. All right, so we got two texture rollers going. That one's a slate roller. That one's 24 inches. This one's a stone texture roller. It's 18 inches. Just giving it good texture. And then we're gonna just go over it with these after, just to give it some of the, like the, these have veining in them with the stone texture. The rollers don't have the veins, so we'll give it a few minutes and we'll go right back over it with these, but at least it'll all be good and textured. And then, you know, we don't have to tap quite as hard on these because it's already got the stone texture to it. We're talking about the electric. Yeah, thing. Yeah. with yeah. that one and then that one on with the people on the stamp. This, I mean, if it's already textured like this, we should be able to stamp it in half the time, I would think, right? Right, just to get some of the bigger lines in. Yeah. Throw it down, lock on it, and then keep rolling. Yeah. Just a matter of getting it magged out first. Right, Val? You want these? Yep. Yeah. Does he have? Well, he, his plan was to dig down and use steel rods to like strong up back. Yeah. Just spin them. There we go. Give it a little more texture. I tried those, I couldn't do it. Do you have the strappies? No. No strappies. He says no strappies. Look at the We have the little roller foo on a handle, maybe. This one? Yeah.
All right, so the rolling gets really good texture, and then we go over it with the, the mats just to get a little bit of the veining in, and that does a really good job. We got liquid release. We got a little bit of black charcoal powder in the liquid release to give it the two-tone effect. And then that'll be it for today, for stamping. All right, so this is a sneak look inside the concrete underground where I have multiple trainings multiple different categories on how I teach you how to pour and finish concrete, how to repair concrete, how to do epoxy coatings. There's just multiple different trainings where I go in depth and teach you how to do all this stuff.